this afternoon I'll first talk about the Holy Spirit. Ah, jioni hii tutataka kuongea kuhusu Roho Mtakatifu. How the infilling of the Holy Spirit can help our spiritual life and help our ministry. Vile tunavyojazwa na Roho Mtakatifu anaweza kutusaidia katika huduma yetu. Because then you can start to learn to pray with the Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hivyo tunaweza kujifunza jinsi ya kutenda na kufanya na kazi na Roho Mtakatifu. Now, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is very important. The disciples of Jesus have been with him for three years. And they can turn and they can perform miracles too. But Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem for the for the uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit. That we see that it's important to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. For me, a lot of people ask me what I should do to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, alianza kuuliza mambo haya katika mwaka wa 1973 alianza uchungaji mwaka wa 83 but in 1998 years after i became a pastor lakini mwaka wa 98 miaka 15 baada ya yeye kuwa mchungaji kazini my life was transformed by the infill of the holy spirit maisha yake yalibadilishwa kwa kujazwa na roho mtakatifu when the evangelist Carlos Alconia from Argentina came to Hong Kong wakati mwinjilisti aliko alipotembele kutoka Argentina alipotembelea Hong Kong and he laid hand on me akaekelea mkono juu yake the moment he touched me wakati alinguza i felt power like electricity enter me aliona nguvu kama umeme juu yake and experience, at the same time experience a great love fill my heart na akahisi kwamba nguvu zingine zote zimeingia paka ndani ya moyo wake in a very powerful way kuanzia iliyo kuu zaidi that immediately i I was touched by the Holy Spirit and I cried for a long time. Wakati alikuwa alipata mguso wa Roho Mtakatifu, alilia kwa muda mrefu sana. It's like a very close encounter with God. Yaani ilikuwa ni mguso wa ukaribu sana na Mungu. Before I experienced an infilling of the Holy Spirit, I did experience the Holy Spirit. E wakati alikuwa hajajazwa Roho Mtakatifu, alikuwa anahisi uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu. I experienced peace and joy and love. Alikuwa katika anahisi upendo, amani na kila jambo lote ambalo lina furaha. But not in such a powerful way. Lakini si kwa njia ambayo ilikuwa ya ukuu wa aina hiyo. The experience in 1998 made me realize God is very real and very close. Ile nguzo wa mwaka wa 1998 uliweka nguvu halisi ya roho mtakatifu na kaisi kitenda kazi ndani mwake and he is powerful and is full of love na akaona ni ya nguvu na imejaa upendo it impressed me with how powerful and how real he is that he can touch us yani yeye ni wa ukuu wa muhimu na ana nguvu wakati anapotuguza huyo roho mtakatifu it changed my attitude toward god alibadilisha nia yangu kwa Mungu. I realized that God is very close to me. Alijua kwamba kumbe Mungu ni muhimu kwa ajili yake. And I started to spend long hours praying. Akaanza kuchukua muda mrefu katika uombezi. And then later I started to experience joy whenever I pray. Ah sasa akaanza kuhisi raha wakati anaomba. One day in a meeting I started to experience the joy of the Lord. Mmoja katika mkutano akaanza kuingiza kuingiwa na furaha ya Mungu. And I really like the joy of the Lord. Na kweli akapenda ile raha ya Mungu. And I want to keep the joy. Na anataka kuendelea na ile raha ya Mungu. So in a meeting I kept loving God in my heart. Na katika mkutano akaendelea kumpenda
na Mungu na ile raha yote. I have learned before that how to pray from the spirit. Na nilijifunza kutokea pale jinsi ya kuomba ndani ya Roho Mtakatifu. Before that experience whenever I pray from my heart I can feel power go through me. Kabla ya siku hiyo ninapoomba nasikia nguvu za roho zikiwa ndani mwangu zikinyongeza kazi. But when I experience the joy the joy just keep flowing up. Ah, wakati alihisi kumbe raha na raha sasa inaingia katika uumbizi wake anahisi ana furaha kila saa anapoomba and then when i keep loving god from my heart akiendelea kupenda mungu kutoka kwa ndani mwa moyo the joy keep coming out oh pendo unazidi kushuka na raha na furaha inazidi kushuka i want to keep the joy anataka kuendeleza ile raha so that any time i have any burdens kwa sababu kila kila saa anapofanya kazi ya mungu the joy of the lord can drive away any burdens furaha mungu inaleta na inatoesha kazi ya uzuni kazi ya vita ndani mwangu and so that i can pray for people too they can experience the joy also ili kwamba hata mimi naweza kuombea wengine waisi furaha katika huduma ya mungu so on the way home when i took the bus wakati anakwenda nyumbani anapochukua gari i want to keep the joy anataka kuendeleza ile raha na furaha but i could not laugh out loudly in a in a in a bus eh lakini hange hange kuwa anacheka na kufurahia ndani ya gari akienda nyumbani so i pray like this aliomba namna hiyo and the joy but eh, i don't give out the sound eh, yani anaomba sasa kimoyo moyo hatoi sauti maana ako ndani ya gari and when i was at home i kept praying na wakati alienda nyumbani aliendelea kuomba the next morning i woke up i kept praying asubuhi alipoamka anaendelea na maombi na any time now even in the middle of night when i wake up wakati wote sasa hata kama ni usiku wa manane anapoamka when i think of jesus or love jesus wakati nafikiria yesu anapenda yesu i can experience his power his joy his love ana hisi uwepo wake upendo wake na amani yake is very very free yani yeye ako huru na huru kabisa it has transformed my relationship with god amebadilisha uhusiano wake na mungu then i really like god much more than before hakika anapenda mungu zaidi kabla i depend on god much more anategemea mungu zaidi God also started to show me my deeper sins mungu alianza kumuonyesha hisia zake za ndani Sometimes you know some of the sins are very subtle. Wakati mwingine mawazo yetu ya ndani yanakuwa na ugumu zaidi kuelewa. But after experience the evil of Holy Spirit I became very sensitive. Lakini baada ya kujazwa roho mtakatifu alikuwa sasa mwangalifu zaidi. For instance one day after I experienced the Holy Spirit I called someone to share my experience of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mana siku moja alitisha mmoja ili aweze kumweleza jinsi amejazwa Roho Mtakatifu na jinsi Mungu anatenda kazi kwa Roho Mtakatifu. But that person was not open to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yule mtu hakuwa wazi ili ajazwe Roho Mtakatifu. And he she was very angry. Na alikuwa amekasirika jamani. And scream at me na akamupigia kelele and i hang up the phone then i try she hang up the phone na yeye alikata simu and i pray and i found that i lost my joy aha na yeye akaomba akakuta kwamba ha furaha yake imetoweka you know ever since i experienced the joy i want to keep myself in the joy of the lord for as long as possible for the whole day yani mara nyingi tangu ajazo roho mtakatifu hangependa kupoteza roho mtakatifu na furaha ya roho mtakatifu siku yote mzima i don't have to be laughing out loudly aha singi sisi yani sisi pendi niwe nikicheka siku yote yo aha I can be just think about Jesus and then the joy keep coming up. Aha, naweza kuwa nafikiria kuhusu huyu Yesu na ile raha inakuja tu. So when, at that time when the person was angry with me, wakati ule ule mtu alikuwa amekasirika na mimi. And then I pray I found that I lost the joy. Nilipoomba nikakuta furaha yangu imetoweka. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to handle this problem. Na Mungu mtakatifu akaniongelesha jinsi ya kuingia na kusuluhisha suluhisho hili. I cannot change the mind of that person. Siwezi kubadilisha mawazo ya huyo. And I've done nothing wrong. Na zimefanya asiyafanya kitu mbaya. But I call her up and said to her. Lakini mimi nilipomuita nikamwelea 
If I made you unhappy, I'm sorry for that. Akalipata mimi nimekasirika na nikajutia jambo hilo. So I did not say I said I share with her is wrong. Ni sisi kwamba yale ambayo niliongea na yeye yalikuwa si mazuri ama si sahihi. I just said to her if I made her unhappy, I'm sorry about it. Nilimwambia kwamba kama nimefanya lolote baya naomba unisamehe. But she was still angry. Lakini bado alikuwa amekasirika. And, and she hang up the phone again. Na tena akakata simu. And I, after that I said, well I've done what I can do. I can let go. Nikasema sawa mimi nimefanya ile ambayo nastahili kufanya basi mimi naachilia iende. And I pray again the joy of the Lord came back. Aha, nikaomba tena furaha ya Mungu haikurudi. And the, and the Lord said to me, Na Mungu akanieleza. From now on handle any problems of people or yourself like that. Ah, uh, kwa 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 kwanza saa hii shida yoyote ikija katika hali hiyo hebu ifanye jinsi ilivyo ilivyokuja so that I won't be affected by people ili kwamba usiwe ukaadhiriwa uka na watu so I can keep the joy of the Lord all the time ili kwamba uendelee furaha ya Mungu kila wakati so I can free all the time kila mara uwe huru And also after the experience baada ya hayo matukio some people ask me to lay hand on them what for the new reason no I can kuno juu ya and i was surprised that the holy spirit came powerfully upon them na nilishangaa roho mtakatifu alijilia watu wale kwa nguvu sana and drive out demons from them na mapepo yakatoka ndani mwao and brought healing na mabuponyaji ukakuja and people's life was transformed na maisha ya watu ikabadilishwa The first time that I pray and someone got healed, ni siku ya siku ya kwanza mimi kuombea mtu mpaka akapona. In a meeting I pray, you know, after me I pray for some people. Baada ya mkutano nikaombea watu kadhaa. And I ask them what they have experienced. Na nikawauliza wamehisi namna gani. A woman shut up. Mmoja akasimama akaruka juu. And she said my back is healed. Akasema eh mgongo wangu umepona. And every woman jumped up. Na mama mmoja pia akaruka. And said her shoulder pain was healed. Na akasema eh naona mkono wangu umepona tena nilikuwa naumwa hapa kizingidoni. Both of them moved the body. Sasa mwili wote naweza kuzungusha. And there was a third person. Na mtu wa tatu. The evil spirit started to come out. The evil spirit started to come out. Mmoja mapepo yakaanza kumotoka. So I realized what the Bible promise can come true today. Ha, nikagundua kwamba yale maagizo ya Biblia yanaweza kuwa sahihi na yanaweza kuwa katika matendo sasa hivi. And after that all kinds of miracles happened. Baada ya hiyo miujiza ya kila aina yoyote ikaanza kutendeka. One time in a hospital. Siku moja katika hospitali. I drove out demon from someone. Alite alikemea mapepo kutoka kwa mmoja katika At first the doctor said that she has to go to the mental hospital. Lakini daktari alikuwa amesema huyu aende katika hospitali ya watu wa kurugalitwa. But after the prayer the evil spirit came out. Baada ya maombi maroho mapepo yakatoweka. And the doctor said she can go home now. Na daktari akasema yule daktari akasema sasa huyu anaweza kwenda. It was totally different. Ilikuwa ni And she has a few friends who came to visit her. Na alikuwa na uhuru sana ukuja kumtembelea kila saa. And I said to her I'll pray for you to protect you from the evil spirit. Akasema na kuombea ili nikulinde zidi ya maroho mabaya. And there was one person when I pray for her her body started to sway. Na ha, tuna mmoja aliyemuombea na mwili wake ukaanza sasa kwenda huku na huku. Now the Bible the Bible was talk about that John The apostle when he saw Jesus in Revelation 1:17 he fell to the ground. Aha, Biblia inasema wakati Yohana alipomwona Yesu katika ufunuo yeye alianguka chini. So the Holy Spirit can move the body of a person. Kumbe Roho Mtakatifu anaweza hata kutingiza mwili wa mwanadamu. And also saw in the New Testament when he saw Jesus he also fell to the ground. Tena Saulo katika agano zipya alipomwona Yesu alianguka chini. So the Holy Spirit power can come to the person's body. Kumbe roho anakuja katika mwili wa mwanadamu pia. When it's powerful the person can fall down. Akiwa ana nguvu zaidi mtu huenda akaanguka. When it's not so bad, so powerful the person might sway. Aha, tena akiwa na nguvu huenda akadegeza mwili wake ukaanza kuwa mdegevu akanegea nege. And this person 
was swaying. I said to where the Holy Spirit is upon you. Open your heart to hunger for God. Now, the moment she started to do that, immediately she started to laugh loudly. She was in a hospital next to the elevator. Elevator. You know, elevator. Ah, Karibu and there were people walking by. But she was just here with the joy of the Lord. She laughed for about five minutes. And then she started to cry. And then she cried for maybe 20 minutes. And then she was here with the joy of the Lord again. I asked her what happened to her. She said when she was young, she had been hurt by people many times. And during the prayer, all the sadness, the burdens came out. And then this person later came to my church. And later she studied for ministry. And now she's a missionary. One encounter that changed her life. This has happened a number of times. Now, we need the Bible, we also need the power of the Holy Spirit. That in filling the Holy Spirit actually is a very intimate relationship with God. Now, this is how I define the infilling of the Holy Spirit. First, I want to say every Christian has the Holy Spirit. But the degree of infilling might be very low. Lakini kiwango cha kujazwa huenda kikawa ni kidogo. The infill the Holy Spirit generally means na kujazwa roho mtakatifu kuna maanisha the presence of God with this person is very strong. Yaani uwepo wa Mungu ndani ya huyu mtu ni wa mkuu sana. And I will see there are three signs. Na utaona ishara tatu. One sign is that ishara ya kwanza ni hii. Whenever he loved God or hunger for God, he can experience the Holy Spirit in some way. It could be peace, joy, burdens go away, or love. Or power. And then number two, his life will be transformed in a certain way. But this depends on how much he cooperates with God. It's true that there are some people who have, who have the whole power of the Holy Spirit. But they hunger for money or power. Lakini wana kiu ya pesa na kiu ya uongozi. And then they, you know, they greet for money or they greet for power or they do things that is not critical. Aha, sasa wana kimbia, wana tafuta pesa, wana tafuta vieo na wana poteza jabo mimu sana na kari ya kazi ya mungu. But sometimes God doesn't take away the infield of Holy Spirit from that person. Lakini mara nyingi mungu hachukui kujazo wa rumu takatifu kwa huyo mtu. It doesn't mean that God likes him. Haimanishi kwa mba mungu wa mempenda. God might not like what he does. But God let the power of the Holy Spirit stay in him. I have heard in many places there are 
you know, speakers who have the power of spirit, but they hunger for money or power or who you know, serve in unbiblical ways. In some situation, these people might even have evil spirit. So I encourage you not just to hunger for the power of the Holy Spirit, but to hunger for a good relationship with God. Okay, and then number the third sign of the evil of Holy Spirit is uh, when he pray for people that these people can experience the work of the Holy Spirit. Aha, they could experience peace, burdens go away, love, joy, power, or healing. So the signs that a person is filled with the Holy Spirit. First, you can experience the Holy Spirit anytime he prays. And number two, there is transformation of his life to a certain extent. And number three, when he prays for people, he, the people, these people can experience the work of the Holy Spirit. But I want to say this: hunger for following God in God's way. Don't just hunger for miraculous power. Because in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it talks about there are some people who can preach and cast out demons and pray uh, for miracles. In a, in a sema usu watu ambao, wanaweza kuomba, wa achilie miujiza, wa ombe watu wapone. But yet Jesus doesn't know them. Lakini Yesu hawajui. So, for the infield of the Holy Spirit, it's very important we set it right that we hunger for God. Lakini haya mambo ni muimu sana tumijazwa rom takatifu na tuwe na kiu ya kutafuta mungu wa kwe. I want God to be my king, my Lord. I don't just look for just look for power. Okay. Now, at this point, is there anyone who has a question? I will continue with this teaching. But first, about the infill of Holy Spirit, what it can do to a person. Does anyone have any question? Okay, if not, then I'll continue. Okay, uh, yes. And if you have a question, please rush to the front and take the mic. Now, if you have a question, if you have a question, you can come to the front of the camcord. Yes, you can come to the front of the camcord. Over the topic we learned today. Did the Holy Spirit exist before the ascending of Jesus Christ in heaven? That is the question. Yani roho mtakatifu alikuja kabla ya 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 Yesu kwenda mbinguni ama did, did the Holy Spirit come? Exist. Exist before, before the ascending of Jesus Christ in heaven. Okay. okay. Question. Question number two. When the Holy Spirit fills into somebody, which part of the body first fills his presence? Third question. 
Can the Holy Spirit be kept in a bottle or in a handkerchief? Aha. Roho mtakatifu anaweza kuwekwa kwa chupa ama kwa kwa kwa, 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 kwa nguo. And the last question is that I am the pastor. Ni yeye kama mchungaji. Can I command the Holy Spirit to fill into somebody? Anaweza kuamuru Roho Mtakatifu aingie kwa mtu? May you be blessed. Simbarikiwe Bwana. Thank you. First, ya kwanza, the Holy Spirit existed for, from eternity to eternity. Roho Mtakatifu alikuwepo kuanzia mwanzo hadi mwisho. And even in the Old Testament there were records of people being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hata katika Agano na Kale watu walijazwa Roho Mtakatifu. God said he would let the spirit on Moses to come unto the 70 elders. Na Mungu anasema katika Biblia anaachilia roho kwa Musa ili naye aachilie roho kwa wazee arba wazee 70. And 68 of them came together and two were I didn't come together. Na wa sitini na nane walikuja pamoja, lakini wa wili tu hawakuandamana nao. But all of them started to prophesy. Lakini wote walianza kutoa unabi. When the Holy Spirit came upon them. Na roho takatifu alikuja juu yao. And uh, Elijah said to Elijah. Elijah and Elijah Elijah alipokuwa na Elijah Elijah. He prayed that the spirit that moves in Elijah would be double, uh, that it would be a double anointed on him. Anasema Elijah ni kiondoka ni takupa sehemu marambili ya roho wangu. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. Katika okorizo wa kwanza kuminambili umstari watatu. There it says that no one can confess that Jesus is Lord except by the work of the Holy Spirit. Aha, akuna yote amba na weza kukiri uwepo na kazi ya mungu pasipo na msaada wa roho mtakatifu. So anyone from Old Testament to New Testament that they will confess God, follow God, is because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Katika agano na kare na agano jipe yote amba angefuata mungu alikuwa anakusaidiwa ama alikuwa na msaada wa roho mtakatifu. But what does Pentecost mean then? Na sasa pendekote inamanisha nini? Pentecost means that in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is accessible to all Christians. Sasa pendekote inamanisha katika agano jipe ya kwamba kila mkristo anawezo na uhuru wa kuambatana na roho mtakatifu. And the work of the Holy Spirit will be one very widespread among the Christians. Na roho kazi ya roho mtakatifu itakuwa kubwa mahali mkristo atakuwa yupo. Then, in the New Testament when we come close to God, have a close relationship with God, then we will have the presence of God and the power of the Holy Spirit for ministry. Na sasa katika agano zipia, tunakuta kwamba katika uwepo na uwezu wa roo mutakatifu, tunasoka karibu na mungu, nae anatupa mbubu za kutenda gazi katika kali ya kipende kote. Okay, and the second question is... Ah, swali la pili li likuwa... Swali la pili li likuwa ya kwamba... Lali, ha? When the Holy Spirit fills into us, into somebody. Oh, what do you feel? What do you feel first? The body which, part, okay. which part? Okay. The body first. Now. Ah, that's an easy. It's different for each person. Ni tofauti na kila mtu. Sometimes it's simultaneous. Eh, yani wakati mungine inatoa usiru moja kienda nyingine the body the body feels the power of the Holy Spirit and then the heart feels the peace or the love or the joy of the Lord or the release of burdens it can happen together but actually it doesn't matter how we experience the point is that we notice the presence of the Holy Spirit upon us and we learn to hunger for God so that we are sensitive when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. Zuri ni kuzuri ni kuamba uwe na kiu na utamani ujua kuamba ni roho takatifu akikuja ni tahisi kivipi. 
Now for me, I experience it over my body. Lakini kwa yeye yeye anahisi kwa mwili wake wote. I experience peace and joy. Anataka love. Anaona upendo furaha ndani ya moyo wake. And the same time I feel power over my body. Na kila saa hiyo tu anahisi kuna nguvu katika mwili wake. If I relax I can feel the swaying of the power. Ah, ah, wakati mwingine anaona mwili wake kulegea legea anaona nguvu za mwili. So for each person is different. So kwa kila mtu hakika ni tofauti. And what's the third question? La tatu sasa. Can the Holy Spirit be kept in a bottle or in a okay. handkerchief? Now, in Acts chapter 19, they talk about Paul that some people took hand handkerchiefs from him and aprons from him and then put on the sick people and they are healed. Katika huduma ya Paulo, siku moza ama siku kala alikuwa kiumbea vitamba na akiwapatia watu huu za rozi likuwa katika vile vitamba. Now why this is so, we don't know. We don't know why. Na hivi kutendeka hivi hatujui hivi mbetoke yaji. But the Bible does talk about that. Lakini sasa haya ni mambo ambayo ni tofauti sisi. At one time I met someone who has been to Billy Graham's meeting. Nilikuwa katika uduma yangu ni kakutana na mtu moja ambayo likuwa katika mkutano wa mtungaji Billy Graham. And Billy Graham in the beginning had healing also in his meetings. Lakini Billy Graham katika mikutano yake alikuwa na mikutano ya uponyazi. And this person has a twisted sign. Na uyo mtu alikuwa na shida ya mgongo ambao ulikuwa mejikunja. And then he got a handkerchief that Billy Graham prayed for and put on his body. Na akabemba kitamajake na kumpatia Billy Graham aombe hila weko mini wake. He was healed instantly. Aliponya kigafla. So it's possible. Ina wezekana. But... Like, yeah, I know there are evangelists who sell oil or handkerchiefs. Ah, na kwa ah kwa imani yangu na kwa experience yangu ni nadua kuna wajilisi ambao wanauza ma ma manguo wanauza hata mafuta. The problem is he's trying to get money from the ministry. Shida ni hi, uyo mtu anajaribu kupata pesa ya uduma yake. Now for a ministry, people can offer, they give offering. Na katika uduma yetu, sisi tunamini mungu, anapitia kwa watu kupeana sadaka. But we cannot demand people to pay in order for us to pray for them or to receive a handkerchief. Lakini sisi hatulazimishi watu walipe ili wapole ama tuwauzie vitamba ili tupate hivile uduma yetu itaendelea. Apana? So I see a wrong attitude of some of these evangelists. Sasa, yeye aliona ni ambaya kwa huyu mwinjilisti. Now if someone does something like that, then I would say avoid them. Na nikikuambia hivi leo kwa mba ukiwana mtu wa mafanya hivu kwa niyambaya hivu wa chana na hivu kwa zia laza hivu. Now, praying for handkerchiefs and taking it to someone would be applicable if someone is far away and we cannot, the person cannot come and then we can pray for handkerchiefs to be brought to the person. Kwa mtu alie mbali na naaitaji msaada wako, unaweza kuombea kitamba na aweze kupewa ili kikaweze kutenda mujiza akiwa kule mbali, lakini the best is still to lay on lay hands on Lakini jambo la muhimu ambalo limekubaliwa ni vizuri tumwekelee mkono. What's the fourth question? And the fourth question was that can the servant of God authorize or command the Holy Spirit to fill into someone? Okay. Now I will never use the word command. I will never use the word command. Mimi sijazoea kukua muru. We can ask God to do it. Tunaeza kuuliza mungu ajaze mtu. I can never command God to do something. Mimi siwezi kulazimisha ama kwa muru mungu afanya lolote kwa manadamu. Now for someone to experience the Holy Spirit. Sasa kwa wewe kuhisi wewe kwa roo. We can pray for them. Tunaeza kuombea. We can ask the Holy Spirit to come upon them. Tunaeza kuuliza kwa upendo wa mungu roo ashuke jiyao. We can lay hand on them. Tunaeza kwa hiki na hiko. And sometimes even in a group meeting, they pray together and people can experience the Holy Spirit. Aha, hata kwa kati mungine, katika mikutane ya hana la mikuba, tuweza kuuza roo mtakatifu, ashukie watu. But it also depends on the person, how open he is to God. Na inalingana na uyule mtu amaya anaomba, akuwazi na mnagani na mungu. How hunger he is for God. Yeye anakiu na mnagani na mungu. Okay. 
So I will use the word command, I will use ask. Asante sana kwa hiyo maswali. Kwingine, kuna mwingine anaishia kuhusu maswali. Tunaomba tuje tu sisi wote ambao tuna maswali kuhusu Roho Mtakatifu tuweze kuheshimu kile. Amen. Bwana Yesu, praise the Lord. Mimi swali langu naauliza ni kwamba my question is mtu anapoingiwa na Roho Mtakatifu when someone is filled with the spirit of God, anaruhusiwa kwenda kutoa zile zile vita ambazo zimefukwa mahali ama ni kuamuru tu roho ambayo aenda atoe is he allowed to go and bring the witchcraft in the area from maybe something like snakes like what <coughs> those witches is he allowed to go and bring them ama roho munga aenda atawale tu na azimaliza or the spirit of or he sends the spirit of god to go and destroy the powers of witches and witchcraft I don't understand what what do you mean he praying in the how first part of the question. I don't understand what is it? This is what he's saying. That when you pray and there is some witches, witches, witchcraft, charms, charms at a corner. So is he allowed to go and uh, bring the charms? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Of course not. We cannot use any, you know, demonic way, the witch way, the ways of the witches. It's always by God. It's always by God. Never with other ways. Anasema hivi, wewe kama umejazwa roho mtakatifu, wapendwa, roho mtakatifu hawezi kutuma kuenda kuleta zile vitu, lakini ni Mungu mwenyewe anashuka kuharibu zile vitu. Because God hates witchcraft. Kwanza Mungu amechukia uchawi. Okay. Do and what's the second part of the question? Send me a previous one. I think it's it's okay. Praise God. You know, you might laugh at me. Munaeza kumseka. But let me just ask. Lakin wanza ulize. There are two questions here. Ana maswali mawili. But if the first one you might laugh at me. Lakin la wanza uweza mkumseka. Who is this Holy Spirit you're talking about to people? Yani, who you wrote the Galif na kumongele ya inani? I don't know him. He is on duty. Second, the pili. When somebody has a malaria, mtu akiwa na ugonjwa, there are symptoms to know this is a certain disease. Kuna dalili ya kuonyesha kwamba huyu mtu anagonjeka malaria. The reason to ask this, so the sababu ya kuuliza. So many people today they claim to have the Holy Spirit. When you want to wanna die, you wanna roam together. We follow them to now find them. Lastly, we find that we are we are ending at a wrong place. Mushowe to the kuta to be fungwa katika sehemu hiyo. What are the symptoms of knowing that there is a Holy Spirit filled man? Yani ni sa ni 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 biashirio na ishara gani tunaweza kuziangalia ni yote vile kwamba huyu mtu amejazwa roho mtakatifu. I didn't get the first part is that the first part was asking he doesn't know what the Holy Spirit is. Okay. First, Holy Spirit is not what he is a who. Aha. Roho mtakatifu ana 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 nafsi na ni ni ki, kiumbe hai. Sasa si kitu lakini ni kiumbe hai. Holy Spirit is God. Roho mtakatifu ni Mungu. Father, Son and Holy Spirit is Baba, one God. Mwana Roho mtakatifu ni Mungu kwa utatu mmoja. In three persons. Katika sehemu ya utatu. So God, the Holy Spirit is God. Roho mtakatifu ni Mungu. Okay. So the second part is how do we know this person has the Holy Spirit? Yes. Right? What what are the signs to show this? Okay. Yes. The signs are the life that transform lives. Na yeye yani vya shirio ya kwanza ni kwamba utaona huyu mtu ana kitu cha kubadilisha maisha ndani mwake. That he has a close relationship with God. Ana uhusiano kamilifu na Mungu. That he honor God, respect God and love God. Anaheshimu Mungu na anapenda Mungu. 
And also, at, at the beginning, I said there are three things that a person can experience. Aha, mwanzo, kuna vitu vitatu mtu so anytime he prays, he can experience the presence of God. Kila saa, uwepo wa mungu. There is transformation of life. Kuna kwa maisha. Number three, when he prays for people, people experience the Holy Spirit and also experience transformation of life. Wakati anaombea watu, watu wanaisi uwe kwa mungu na maisha yao ya nabadilishwa. There are many evangelists who claim to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Kuna wangilisti ya mbao wanadai kuwa na roo mtakatifu. If we don't know the life, they, we have to watch the lives. Kama hatujui maisha yao, ni viema uangalie maisha ya uyo mwindilisti yako na mnagani. Do they preach the Bible? Do they preach from the Bible? Wanaubili bibilia, wanaubili kutoka katika bibilia au. Do they teach people to follow the Bible? Wanafunisha watu bibilia ama wanafunisha mambo yao. Do they live a Christian, a good Christian life? Wanaishi maisha mazuri ya Christo ama ni maisha gani? Are they devoted to love God and follow God? And then there are so many who hunger for love of money or power. Or control people. Ama wanataka kushikilia people from other churches. Ama kuiba watu kutoka makanisa mengine Don't follow them. Usiwafuate wewe hawa watu. And I want to say this. Atayakusema hii. Don't go to different meetings and hunger, you know, expect to experience the Holy Spirit. Usiende kwa mikutano mingi mingi kuholeda holeda ukitaka tu hapa roa kwa hapa roa kwa hapa roa kwa hapa roa. Unless your pastor has known this person and recommends you to go, Paka mchugaji wako Amejua huyu mtu Na anakuekelea Anakupa ushauri wa kumfuata Na kufuata mafundisho yake And today I'm going to tell you how You can be filled the Holy Spirit when you pray together Heo nataka ni kuambie Jisi unaweza kuja Solo mtakatifu tunapo homba pamota You have You don't have to go to different places to experience the Holy Spirit. Ayo mitaji kutebea sehemu ya hapa na pale kuhobe la obela nipo ujazo lo mtakatifu wapana. You come to God. Kuja kwa mungu. Okay? Okay, now I'll continue then. Niendele kutoka hapo sasa. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about how people can experience the Holy Spirit. Nataka kuhoge kuhusu jinsi watu wanaweza kuhisi uwepo wa roo mtakatifu. Now for this you can write these five verses down. Unaweza kuandika haya maandiko zini sasa. Okay.